Hello, good morning, y'all. Um, welcome to the Manic Pussy Dream Vlog. I'm your host, Caroline Georges, and welcome today. So I, so I ended up doing five open mics yesterday, and I went to this one at this bar with a friend of mine. She's this really cute, um, like, comic who does these really, she's like really dry sense of humor and stuff, and I just, I, I really have high hopes for her. I really hope she makes it because she just has such a unique sense of humor and and she kind of inspires me with them. And when I'm around her, I know she's a good audience to receive kind of some of my stranger jokes, you know. And so I I do this one. I, there's this one joke that <clears throat> oh my god, I swear to fucking god, three quarters of the time this joke kills. And I'm just gonna talk about it. I don't know. I'm. It's just. It's, comedy is so weird. It is so fucking weird. Like, it's weird what people laugh at. Like, I mean, have you ever thought about that? Like, it's weird what you find funny, you know? And it's just like, and, you know, it just, that something triggers something within us that makes us make a sound, you know? It's so, it's so magical. It really is a magical thing. You know, but anyways, this joke, so basically what the joke is, is it's like my, my ultimate sexual fantasy, where this is like what I'm masturbating to, because I'm really into like erotica and fantasies and stuff like that, so this is like my ultimate fantasy, where basically I want two guys to fight over me, and then the two guys take it to court, and they lawyer up, and they are fighting over me in court over who gets me, and... But then it turns, in, and then I start describing the plot of Air Bud, where I'm the, the dog that's really good at playing basketball. So that's the only thing that's different in this story, <laughs> is that it's me. It's not a golden retriever that can play basketball. It's me that can play basketball, you know? And so it's like, and it, like three, I swear to fucking God, three quarters of the time that I tell this joke, it's fucking hilarious and it kills. But like at the same time, like 25% of the time, like I don't know what it is. Like I'm still trying to figure it out what's going on 25% of the time that it doesn't do well. But I, um, so I found this really difficult mic at this bar where it's really hard to get a laugh. Like they do not lie to you. Like you have to be on point, you have to be really good and stuff and it's just like, and you have to be kind of a natural and you have to be comfortable up there. And I was nervous, it was my first time performing there and so I was nervous. And now I'm getting nervous, oh by the way, so my performance at the comedy store isn't until January 3rd, I thought it was December 3rd for some reason. Anyways, and so I, I don't know, I have like, I'm now I'm getting kind of freaked out, like the comedy store, those people are not going to lie to you. They're not going to laugh at your jokes if they don't think you're funny. You know what I mean? I do could, I mean, it's like, and you know, I do good. I do good. I know I get laughs and I know I do good and stuff like that. But still the comedy store is like, that's a place where you don't want to fail. You know, you don't want to fail there and you're not your first time. Certainly not. And, um, <clears throat> and so it's just like my big question right now, like, I mean, ever like, it's just like, do I do the air bud joke? at the comedy store. Is this what I'm going to bring to the stage of the comedy store? A, like a story of, of, about my sex, my ultimate sexual fantasy where I, where it's the plot of Arabud except I'm the dog that plays basketball. And I'm really good. Um, yeah, I make every basket. That's what I've noticed when I do the joke with like a really breathy, turned on voice and stuff. And I act like really into it. Oh, by the way, I'm on the patch now. Sorry, I've quit smoking finally. So I'm on the patch. I'm on two patches. Um, and they're working really well. I feel nicotined up. I'm not smoking. I'm totally healthy. I'm having coffee instead of cigarettes today. And I'm really proud of myself. And everything is all good. Everything is working out. I'm making good choices. But I got really fucked up yesterday, unfortunately. Um, and I went on stage at this really difficult open mic. Um, and I was high, I was really stoned and I forgot my intro. I forgot how to inch like I, for, I didn't set up the jokes very well and they didn't lie to me. They weren't my friends. They, you know what I mean? They weren't other open micers. They, this was a bar place. You know what I mean? Where people were just like, they didn't know me if I, and I got some laughs. I still got some laughs. Um, so I, but at the same time, I, I know, I know for sure that I, the laughs that I got, I definitely worked for and earned because 
they were not nice there. So I have like this great open, I found that I discovered this great place to go and practice comedy every Sunday when they have it. So I can go every Sunday to this bar mic and really try out my stuff. And so next week, next Sunday, um, I'm going to do my airbud joke. And I'm just, I'm not going to get high. I'm going to be sober all day. And I'm just going to focus and I'm going to do the joke. And I'm going to just, and if it gets laughs, then I'll do it at the comedy store. And, um, yeah, so it's all good. I'm so excited for the next roast battle, though. I have to say, I really love roast battle. It's so fun. I wrote some jokes yesterday, you know, about, like, how he's, like, how he has sex with underage girls. And, um, and then, like, one of them, it's, like, he's, like, <clears throat> he got hit by a car, so now he's, he has an excuse why he's retarded. Um... And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, there's, a, what was another one? Uh, oh, um, he caught, caught dealing drugs, but, um, but really he was just caught roofing girls' drinks, you know, just stuff like that, you know what I mean? He was in a fraternity, so, like, that is sort of, like, what I'm, I'm just trying to, like, make, paint about as, like, this football player rapist and stuff, and so that's my angle, and so that's how I've been writing jokes, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, uh, anyways, comedy is really hard, but like, what makes something funny? You know, what makes somebody funny? You know, and what makes me funny? Like, that was the thing for the longest time. I would say shit, not trying to be funny or, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of a silly person. Like, I'm silly. Like, I just like being silly. That's just sort of my... I was silly with my dad. I was raised by my dad. My dad was a silly man, and I liked being silly with him. So that's just, like, when I'm comfortable, I just like being silly, you know? And um, and so but I never understood what... Like, like, I, I, like, I thought to myself, like, I thought, I wish someone would record me when I'm being funny. So that way... I know when I'll know when I'm being funny so I can kind of take that and hone it and stuff and I'm I'm funny sometimes without even trying and so it's like if I am funny without even trying then can I be funny if I try to be you know because not ever some people are really just naturally funny but they can't hone it you know they can't put that on stage they can't you know capsulate it into 15 minutes of material you know what I mean and but some people, there are some people, there, there are a lot of, I mean, I'm not talking shit, but there, I know a lot of, like, comics who are just, like, when you talk to them, when you meet them, they're kind of blase people, you know what I mean? Like, and, but for some reason, they just kind of work hard, and they just kind of manage to create a character that is funny, you know? And I've seen that a little bit. But gosh, I I remember, I can't do it justice, but I don't know. I saw magic on stage. There's this guy, and I saw him once. I swear to God, he must have been like some kind of, it must have been a ghost of like a, a comedian that died before he made it or something like that. Because I just, I only saw him once and he killed. And it was with the goofiest, silliest, most ridiculous shit you've ever heard in your life. So he had this one joke and he's like, I support the black community and I'm really afraid they're going to think I'm racist. Because what if I meet a nice lady and she is black and I get engaged to her and I start calling her Beyonce? Beyonce, my black fiance. <laughs> and I don't know what it was. It was just so funny. Like, it was the funniest shit. And everyone was laughing and fucking killed. Everyone was like, that was that joke. It just sort of tickled people in a way that I can't explain. <laughs> like, like, it's just like, no, you can't call a, a black woman Beyonce because she's your fiance. Of course you can't do that, you silly man. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of what's funny about it. And it's so simple. It's so simple. You know, and with my humor, I do a lot of stuff about stripping, which is just inherently very dark. I do a lot of stuff about rape, which is inherently very dark. And it's just, it's hard to get people comfortable. You know what I mean? But I mean, I think <clears throat> Dave Chappelle had a great quote. Dave Chappelle said it best when he said, hey, you know what? It's not my fault I was raped. But you know what? It's not your fault I was raped either. So why can't you laugh at my rape jokes? You know what I mean? 
Like, that's the thing. I have to figure out ways to get people comfortable so I can talk about rape. You know what I mean? Because so much of my joke is about domestic violence and sexual assault, and they're funny jokes. They're funny jokes, and, and they make people laugh, and I know they're funny, and I really believe in them. And, but I just, I, I have to get people on my side. Because if people are feeling sorry for me, they're just not going to laugh. And it's important that people don't feel sorry for me. You know what I mean? So I talk about, I try and like bring up the good stuff that about stripping. Like, hey, look, I made money. Don't feel bad for me. I worked two, three nights a week and I supported myself on working two or three nights a week. I was lazy as shit and making a shit ton of money. And so don't feel bad for me. Don't feel bad for me. But this is what's real in my life and this is what I want to talk about and this is my existence and it's just like a, a comic my friend a male comic of mine he said I he was like I love how you never talk about dating in any of your material I'm you're you don't go with that cliche every female comic talks about dating and you don't talk about dating and I was like holy shit like he's right I never talk about dating like, isn't that weird? I talk about rape, domestic violence, like, mind control, but I never talk about dating. And so, I don't know, like, I have some good dating stories. I'm a storyteller comic, I guess, or that's what I've been told, is that I'm, I tell stories, which I, I, which is fine, you know what I mean? I just, I wish I could write one-liners. I wish I could do that more, but I just, I can write, I, I, you know... I, I've, I'm happy with the kind of jokes that I'm telling and it's different and it's good to be a storyteller comedian and it's fine. Anyways, um, but yeah, he was just, he pointed that out. I don't talk about dating. Because really, everyone goes on dates. And maybe that's why jokes about dating are so funny and are so in demand because everyone goes on dates. And I love going on dates. I just, I don't know. I've never found anything of depth to write about or to talk about from them. Anyways, but I don't know, I guess what really inspired me and what really helped me believe in myself when I first started comedy was Boogie Nights. I watched Boogie Nights and I was like, and I was high and I had an epiphany and I was like, okay, if this movie works as a comedy and it's as dark as it is and it's as real as it is and it's as honest as it is and it's as, and it's as raw as it is, then I can work as a comedian. But, you know, maybe I'll have to accept that I'm going to have a small audience. Maybe that's something I have to think about. That maybe I'll have, I'll, I don't know. I know girls who have dating podcasts that actually don't do too bad, you know. I talk about dating. I talked about, you know, I talk about dating all the time. You know, maybe that has nothing to do with it. But I believe in what I'm doing, and I think it's funny. I've been watching some of my older vlogs, and I'm just, I'm so amazed. And honestly, I'm glad I'm doing these vlogs, because I can just see how well I'm doing. I started watching some of my older vlogs, and it's like, God damn, I have come so far. I am not even fucking stripping anymore. Like, I've come so far. I can't believe that happened, you know? And it's just like... I left stripping and that was a huge step like do you realize how huge of a step that is like how big that is that I left stripping even under the circumstances that I left which you know what I was damn it feels bad to be a gangster but I was a fucking gangster I can always say that But you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I lived a certain way, and I died a certain way in that industry. And that's very true. And I guess that's all I can say about how I got fired. But I was uh, in the stripping industry. The way I lived was the way I died, for sure. Figure that out if you can. Sorry, I have to be... I still have to be a little cryptic about all of this stuff. Because I talked about Hustlers... 
you know, and I've talked about how there have been clients doing coke around me at work and stuff, but that's not going to send me to prison, you know what I mean? And I don't really know what the laws are. I haven't talked to a lawyer. I don't know what I can say or what I can't say. I don't know what could get me killed by a gang. I don't know. So I just need to be a little, I just need to be, care I, I need to be careful with what I say. I do. I need to be careful with what I say. And, you know, and I really pride myself on being able to keep a secret. I do. And, um, and I value people who can keep secrets with me. I love people who tell me their secrets. And I love being people's secrets. Maybe that's the only positive outcome of being a rape victim is that you'll always be someone's secret. So you'll always have a special place in their heart and in their mind because you're their secret. Ugh. Maybe saying it out loud, that doesn't sound so great. But these aren't great situations. And if that's the most positive outcome I can find for these situations, then just how imagine how shitty these situations are to be in. And man, they are shitty. They are so shitty. But that's okay. Because these shitty situations can make people laugh. And comedy is about drawing scary photos of, is about drawing funny photos of scare, the monsters under the bed. I really believe that. And rape is a monster that's under the bed that I want to draw a funny photo of and show it to people. And that's what I'm going to do. That's all I can ever do. And that's all that matters to me. I just want to do comedy. Fuck everything else, you know? But this is my life. I wish I could just talk about dating. I wish I had the life that I could just stay, get on stage and just talk about fucking dating and be done with it. I really wish that were my life and I really wish that that was the material that I had to bring to people to make them laugh with. But that's not what I can talk about because that's not what I relate to. And maybe there are so many women out there like me that need to laugh at rape. There's so many women out there that need to feel like they're not alone and laugh together with me over these horrible, shitty situations. So that's what I'll do. Oh my God. Okay. So, but back to the air bud joke. I mean, the joke is, is that like my abusive ex-boyfriend wants me back because I'm really good at basketball all of a sudden. And then my new boyfriend who's, you know, like wants, wants to keep me, you know what I mean? So they start fighting over me in court. And then I rip up a rolled up newspaper that he used to beat me with. And then that's when I reveal that it's air bud. And, um, and then that's when it gets a huge laugh. And, um, you know, the, I raised the stakes. Like, guys, I'm going to get back together with the guy that beat me with a rolled up newspaper. You know what I mean? Aren't you afraid for me and stuff? And it's like, and it's, I don't know. It's weird. Like, am I, I'm like, I don't know. It's just, I'm so proud of this joke. I'm so happy with it. And um, I'm going to do it next Sunday at this really difficult open mic. And I just really hope I, I'm just going to focus. I'm just going to fucking do it. And I'm just going to make it happen. And I'm going to kill. And I'm going to kill with it. And I really believe in this joke. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it at the comedy store on the 3rd of January. And yeah. But I really hope that it... I could do this joke at the comedy store on January 3rd. <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. <laughs> That's what I'll bless the stages of the comedy store with. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, have a lovely day. Like and subscribe and share and support the Patreon. Bye.